this is not to be um for show. This is not a full show. This is real life situations. Okay? I'm not doing this because I'm trying to get attention. So forever anybody who thinks that they can just hurt themselves if that's what they want to do. I go through this stuff every single time. Sometimes I have a moment, sometimes I don't. Sometimes it gets unsafe, sometimes it doesn't. All I'm telling you this is I'm doing this because I needed to talk about something. Not because of my situation, but I'm doing this because this is the only way I can get some type of safety. The thing and the reason why, the reason why women in the church, if you really want to understand why women in the church act the way they do, let me explain something. As an apostolic, Pentecostal apostolic that is, I don't care if anybody says that it's different because there is no difference to me because I was raised with both of them so I can't explain what it is you can say all you want that there's a differential but I wasn't raised that way here's what I'm gonna say the reason why women when it comes down to relationships the reason why they cry so hard is because our belief is we believe in the apostolic doctrine which means Jesus is the Son of God manifested in the flesh. What does that mean? When he speaks in the Bible and he talks about God being made in himself, where he basically took, takes dust, right? He takes dust and he breathes it in his life. Breathes life in dust. That's what he said. That's what the word says, right? So, the man formation, if he is a spirit, he's breathing life into dust. Dust is dirt. Dirt is what our body is. When we die, our body turns into a powder. Why? Because we all are dust. So when you hear this, the scripture that says, the spirit goes back to God that gave it because he was the one that made man. We were dust. That's what that means. The reason why it's so hard is because when we are saved, we're, we're taught that we get baptized in Jesus' name. What that means is water, baptism, which means we are born again. When people wanted to understand it, Nicodemus was the one that asked Jesus, how can you be born again if I already came from mother? Then Jesus said, you must be born from the water in a spiritual birth, meaning not being born from a woman's womb, but a spiritual birth. So when you get baptized in his name, you go down in a, when they say a watery grave, because if you stay in water too long, you can perish. You have to come up to get air. That's what that means. You go down in a watery grave and you rise up. When you go down, it talks about Jesus. When he died on the cross, he laid down his life. Nobody could just take Jesus. They laid his life down. He laid his life down. So you're laying your life down, and then he, in three days, came back up. If you don't get out of water, you will die. You have to come up for air. So you come back down and go back up you're now a new creation when people say new creation because the water cleanses you old things are passed away behold all things become new doesn't mean you physically look new but the spirit should be new because now you have the holy spirit then when they say speaking in tongues as god gave the utterance according to the book of acts peter was one of the disciples of jesus and he was trying to save, I think he was trying to save the multitude or something. I forgot he was doing. Everybody got on one accord, which means everybody. That means man, woman, boy, girl, they started praying. And because of that prayer, God dwells in the midst. When that means is God will listen if everybody is on one accord, if everybody is praying, that's what that means. So God is in the midst, 
And because everybody was obedient and praying, he 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 blessed them and allowed the language to be changed. When that means change, that means instead of you speaking like I'm speaking English, it's a heavenly language. It's not a, 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 a other language. It's a language that is unknown. That's why it's called the Holy Ghost. Because when you speak another language that's a language that connects with god spanish is what's connected to spaniards english is what's connected to americans and english folk this language a heavenly language is connected with god the holy ghost the utterance he gives us the utterance that's what that means so when they got the holy ghost anybody else was saying they seem like they are crazy because of the fact that who just speaks random out of nowhere that's what that means because anybody if you hear somebody just speaking in tongues out of nowhere and you don't know what that means you're gonna think they're drunk right so when a man walked by and say oh they're drunketh," then peter said that is not drunkenness that is the holy ghost in other words paraphrasing that's what that meant because they all got on one accord praying God honored the prayer and then he gave them the Holy Ghost God God you can't get anything unless God gives it to you that's what that means that's why it's important to go to school because you can't just read everything that you think you know there's a lot of things that mean differently you can't just say stuff without an understanding stuff that was written in Hebrew is not the same in English understand the difference here's the thing <sighs> Jesus thank you Lord that's what that means the reason why women in the apostolic faith go through so much stress because because of what uh, Jesus because of what Jesus 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 because of what Eve did people have hated eve and hated women because they blamed us for the fact that we sinned here's the issue god made man first that means he gave him the law first we we weren't able to get the law because we weren't women we weren't men he made him first he took a rib from us from him and made a woman that's the reason why you need a man that's the reason why when it says woman in the word Wu is added to man. Without the man, it's just Wu. So you can't get mad and say that a woman was taken from it when God took it from a man. You can't, you can say all day long the chromosomes are, are bigger than a man's. The man's XY chromosomes, that's the way it was. I can't change that. I can still support everybody and what they believe, but what is true is true. I can't tell my doctor that this, this, and this because he's going to look at me like I'm insane. Anyway, the reason why women take abuse so hard, the reason why they get so upset with religion and because of relationships, because we were taught to be modest, because of what Eve did, men are so cruel to us, we have to be wholesome, we tolerate almost anything. So when your husband start acting stupid and acting like he wants another woman, and you're trying your best to do everything for him, that's the reason why she's upset, because if she was raised, especially in church, if she was raised to be a certain way, and then he automatically cheats on you. You're confused because you're saying, I thought I was supposed to do that. Because the Bible also talks about in Genesis, therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. You have to leave somebody first before you can become one flesh with somebody else. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife and they shall have one flesh and they shall become one flesh the one flesh is the kid because when a man and a woman come together and they produce a child the one flesh is the child that's the one flesh the child 
it's biblical. I can't change it. I can't sit there and say anything about it. I can't hate God because he said this and that and the third. I can love gay people and all that other stuff, but I can't tell God what to do. That's not my job. That's not why I'm down here. I love gay people. I do. I think they're awesome. But guess what? I can't go to my creator and say, you know what? I'm not a woman because he's going to look at me like, that's what I'm saying. So when people don't understand why women, I'll give you an example. Evelyn Braxton. The reason why I have a special love for for Miss Braxton is because she's an example of somebody that went through a lot. She was married to her husband for 35 years. <sighs> she obeyed. She did the best she could to stay with him. She loved him, but he is strayed, of course. So he is strayed. The reason why she took it so hard is because she was probably raised really hard. So when you got people that always laugh at her and sit there and say, oh, she's old fashioned, leave that woman alone. She's been through enough heartache than to have a whole bunch of negative people who don't even know her be rude to her. I'm not, that's not my mom, but at the same time, I just feel like people are just so disrespectful. You guys come out here, and just because somebody don't like you, you disrespect everything somebody does. These people, their generation has paved the way for us to have a, I wouldn't be able to even go to school with a white person if somebody in her generation didn't say, hey, being called a boy and a girl is wrong. You see what I'm saying? So I can't stand this new generation just being so freakingly blatantly disrespectful. They don't even know that somebody had to go through something, get beat, spit, slapped, so they could have this so-called everybody has rights. There were gay people that used to get killed. And for you to be so rude and disrespectful to other people and sit there and yell at people that are straight, it took a gay person in the 80s and all the way back into the Bible days, Bible days, to go through stuff for you to even have your rights and you're disrespecting them. You need to apologize to everybody who's been beat, stabbed, hurt. And this is how you do stuff. I don't understand it. And then the people that are, that are newly saved. What is this gospel music that y'all playing? That's not gospel. That's R&B. You can't mix holy with unholy. That's not the way it works. I love R&B music. I love it. But when it's a time to worship, I listen to worship music, not music that sounds like James Brown. James Brown was R&B. You can't call God into worship using R&B music. And then for you to have the audacity to bring that foolishness in the church. Listen, I love gay people. But for you, this is, this is, to, the, this is to the saved people. I have to be honest. This is not to the gay people. This is the saved people. You know that... that Christianity people do not support homosexuality so why would you get on the pulpit and start preaching and praying and you know they view that as an abomination I'm just saying I'm not saying it's an abomination I'm saying they view it it's out of respect you don't go to somebody's church that you don't know and just start preaching and you don't know what's going on you don't do that's that's not etiquette you know what i'm saying if you know a, a certain group of people don't like you don't go there that's what i'm saying that you got to use wisdom if they don't like you don't go that's foolish don't go to a place that they don't like you duh and to sit there and see people be so rude and disrespectful just because they're so pressed on this gender situation. Listen, I get rights. I understand that. There's nothing wrong with that. But my issue becomes when you're being disrespectful to people that had to go through it the more and way worse and more brutal. And you guys are being so rude and disrespectful to them. It ain't even so much about being gay. It's now you just being just disrespectful. For what? Somebody had to struggle for you to do that. And this is what y'all do. It's exhausting. That's the reason why they don't like my generation and the generation after us. Because we don't know how to talk. We are so disrespectful. And for what, bro? Somebody had to sacrifice. And you don't care that somebody's sacrificing? <sighs> On another episode of SMS News Channel, I'm going to bed.